this is Joe Corneli, standing in for Charlotte Pierce, who's also here, but I'm doing the MCing today because Charlotte's got all kinds of cool technological wonders to show us, and so her hands are full. Um, but we have Willow Brew here today, joining as a very special guest from Berlin. Hello, and Ray, who can't wave, and Kyle, I think, is still in Florida, although hopefully on vacation right now. So that's Kyle in vacation mode. In case you haven't seen that happen, maybe Let's relax, Kyle. Yeah, it looks um, a little more uh, happy, a little more relaxed and happy. That's good. Okay, so um, but rather than me introducing all of you guys, why don't you introduce yourselves a bit more? Um, and uh, maybe in the order I did from, from my right to your, to your left, hopefully all the same. Willow, could you say hi? And just tell us about yourself. And maybe you don't even know why we, why, why we invited you. But we, let me say why we invited you. We invited you because you seem to be an awesome collaborator, and your blog post impressed both me and Charlotte. And so we wanted to learn from you about kind of what you do in this building new collaborations stuff, but just more about you, et cetera. So that... that that's why we brought you in. Um, <laughs> tell us some more, please. Uh, I am Willow Brew. I wear many hats. Um, I am, the, the two main things that I do are um, uh, Geeks Without Bounds, which does a whole lot of hackathons around humanitarian and disaster response. Uh, but we also run an accelerator for that. Uh, which is six months of mentorship and things like business development and human rights and security for people who want to build tools to make response easier. Um, the other thing that I do is research uh, in part on hackathons, but I do that with the Center for Civic Media out of the MIT Media Lab and also uh, the Berkman Center out of Harvard. And right now I'm sitting in Berlin eating a delicious dinner made by my friend Tomate from uh, all sorts of things. Who Hello. Also has <laughs> <laughs> I also have many hats. <laughs> One was <Good> cooked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and one of the things that I did recently was... Uh, acting as TA, or one of the many fantastic TAs for the co-design studio out of the MIT Media Lab, and so we were writing about collaborative spaces and how we created collaborative space, especially in places where they might not have existed before, so um, developing areas where the methodologies that we use just haven't existed yet, but also um, working with groups like FEMA who are full of amazing people that maybe they haven't had a chance to to do the same sort of collaboration methods that, that we like to use. I, I will be quiet now. <laughs> if, you could, if you could find us a link maybe to that MIT class, that sounds really cool. Um, if there is totally. a link. It's codesign.mit.edu. Codesign, co co -design. okay. Also, uh, you, also just go ahead. since you mentioned MIT, it's also worth pointing out that a good number of people who've joined us have been in the Boston area. Yes. Even, yeah, I mean, even you are in the greater Boston area. Ray, Ray, yeah, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Well, okay, so I've been, you know, I've been working, with, you know, so I've been working with Planet Math and Joe for a number of years. I've, you know, learned about, actually that's who I learned about, about Piragaji through. We also had, as it turned out, you know, about five years before Piragaji started, had a consultant through Planet Math introduce us to Howard Rheingold, so this wound up being, you know, an occasion where a few few ends connected, and you know, I so I've been, you know, interested in, you know, general things like, you know, let's say our collaborative platform, things like, you know, collaborative computer platforms, different ways of education, like for example, one of the things we thought about doing through Planet Math was teaching math classes, and then, you know, obviously should have the theory of pedagogy inform that and then um, lately for the last you know with the Piragaji book I haven't been maybe too involved directly in its editing although I've you know read the thing and discussed it also in the last few of these discussions I've gotten involved with some of the other people who have joined here like for example you know Helene with her commons network then um, Matt with his pro with his c projects about Constitution and um, nuclear reactors, or most recently the Humanity Online people, and so I certainly look forward to you know meeting and seeing where following this discussion wherever it, wherever it goes. Cool. Yeah, I put a couple links by the way. Um, Willow, I don't know if you see the chat, right? I tried to link codesign.mit.edu. I think I got that right. And then this this Commons Abundance platform, which is the thing that. Helen introduced us to, and we're now trying to use that as another less ephemeral 
coordination space compared to Google Plus, which we've been using a lot for our stuff. So well, but um, but I would also are working, yeah, and I would. Sorry. Oh. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, the way I see that is also. Well, I was just going to say the way I see that also is as having an asynchronous thing to complement this, because here we have a synchronous discussion. You know, where all of us have a group call where we're all talking at the same time, but that allows us to continue with the discussion. Um, non-simultaneously later, you know, posting by posting, you know, different thoughts and discussing them in writing. Yeah, no, it's very good. We've had a slew of these different platforms over the years, and maybe we'll get this. Maybe this will be a good one for now. We're still on the experimental basis. So, okay, Kyle, please over to you. Yes, my name is Kyle. I uh, found out about Pyragogy from Joe, and. Uh, Pretty much through my work with Writing Commons, which is a uh, open uh, MOOC uh, that Ohio State, Duke, USF uses, and um, and I'm currently working on a, a senior undergraduate thesis project that involves creating a, an online writing lab for the purpose of uh, participatory. Uh-oh. Participatory something, but it's it's stalled out. Is everyone else still there? It's just me. Okay. Oh, I can, well, I'm still here. So I'm hoping that at some point that will happen perfectly with anticipation, but I don't think it ever will. And I go to New College of Florida. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. You somehow froze halfway okay, through the like participatory, but anticipation, that was pretty good. Nice. Um, Charlotte, do you want to take a, take a turn... Uh, you can also give us a cool um, web demo. Yeah, I have, um, I've been, I don't know, my head is spinning. Um, <laughs> I've been studying a lot about Hangouts these days, so I hopefully this will run a little smoother. But um, Yeah, I'm an independent publisher in the Boston <laughs> area, Arlington, Mass., and uh, I'm a board member on the Independent Publishers of New England, which is a pilot project under Pyragogy now, kind of uh, moving s slowly in some ways and really fast in some ways. Um, so it's it's pretty exciting just to see it kind of naturally happen without people knowing that they're doing Pyragogy, <laughs> um, which is important because they just don't like a new thing. You know, they just don't like to like, uh, jump off into a new endeavor when, when they're like doing everything they can to run their publishing businesses. Um, so I, I've been editing and I'm uh, helping Charlie Danoff and, and Joe get the um, manuscript ready for publication on January 1st, Public Domain Day. Hmm. And I'm going to mute myself again and run the tech. So I'm showing some editing, actually, that, that's been happening on paper. One of the reasons I wanted to turn this thing into a paper book is because then I can write on it. Um, but those things haven't been typed in yet to the uh, to the doc. Um, but basically, yeah, for, for the new people, the, the latest version of this thing is always on puragaji.org. And uh, that is a master copy that then gets turned into potentially other things, including LaTeX for this book. Um, but all their other things feed in. So we have these um, Google Docs, which are feeding in to that. And at the moment, I think we've kind of got to sort of choose our own adventure for the next half hour, 45 minutes, or whatever of the meeting. We can either um, work on chapter summaries which I think would be a lot to ask to do like live editing of, of chapter summaries. Uh, <laughs> okay, link coming soon. Um, so, but, but one thing that I would like to invite people to do is, is pick a chapter, maybe sign up to summarize a chapter or two, so especially those who have read the book, like um, Kyle, Ray, Charlotte, pick your favorite chapter and, and add a summary or sign up for this sign up here in this doc I just posted because that will save me from having to summarize. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to put the doc on the 
screen if I can. Um, okay. When, when, what do is you want the, the sum when do you expect the summaries to be there, to be done? Uh, before Friday, for sure. Ooh. Okay, I'm not sure I could. I'm not sure how much I can do before Friday this week. Okay, that's okay. Then don't sign up. I'll try, but. Uh, okay, if if it happens, I'll then try, good. If it doesn't happen, then then don't sign up because otherwise no one else will do it either. So okay. only maybe you don't don't sign up okay. because uh, that will that will be good if you do not. But everyone else probably should. And uh, not that I can assign you reading Willow, but out of this. Um, stuff, things like organizing a learning context would probably be Charlotte signing up for that, so don't you sign up. No, well, Charlotte okay. can sign up. <laughs> well, could sign up, but I'm just saying out of this, if she wanted to read that, okay, you're getting signed up if you want to, um, to read that and just say a little bit more about how you think that works, you could give us a wonderful critical read of that and write a little abstract as if you were a journal reviewer reviewing it or something, although it's much less formal than a journal. But don't feel like you have to. Something uh, that I would ask for right now is that um, I am super dyslexic. Okay. Um, I'm not good at reading things, but I'm happy to have a conversation with people about where you think it's going, what point you're trying to get across, any questions you have, anything like that. Um, I'm totally like that. That's the the level that my brain is at right now. That's you think okay. That we could uh, work together on that. Yeah, we could. Or there's, I mean. We have also got another interesting opportunity for someone who likes listening. Is we've got tons of these videos. Um, if you wanted to trace back through some of these other videos, Let I'm not suggesting you spend hours and hours of your life watching old meetings of ours. <laughs> However, one of the things we're looking for is kind of, kind of some of the highlights, and we were going to hopefully make a kind of video mix down of all the previous sessions. We've had some really interesting conversations with people, so that would be a more visual, less clickety clack thing if you if you feel like it but again you're new so don't feel like you have to I'm, I'm just mentioning that <laughs> so you feel included not so that you feel obliged or burdened um, so I put the link to the YouTube um, search for pyragogy on the chat yeah okay. and um, the the, the uh, little caveat is that some of the videos are not by us but they say pyragogy which is cool so um, I guess well, somebody at the Open Knowledge Festival 2012. Yeah, this was, this was Anna about a year ago oh, made okay. this video. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, yeah, help, help yourself to videos as an alternative thing to reading blobs of blobs of text. Um, but what I was going to say is there is other options in this thing. So we could also go in rather than rather than summarizing things. And I'm not really prepared to. We could live edit the introduction again, because I have some things there, and and I wanted to kind of get some approval. So I might vote for a live edit to the introduction session um, to get people's opinions, and that would be kind of conversation while editing live. I'm, but then I'm the other thing I wanted. I would really like to hear a little bit more about Willow's work. If, if yeah, yeah, that, that sounds possible. good. The other thing I want to just link to, and then I'll then I'll stop. Is this thing, I was kind of getting around to that, and that, that could be a theme. So let me just post to you, Willow, here, um, help build the Pyragogy Accelerator work in progress. So I, I think your specific experience, you could potentially help us a lot with this idea. So we basically worked on this book for two years to date, and very happy with it as a book. It's kind of the way it works as best, I think, as a book is like, People should not just read it, but co-edit it or work in the space doing something else, making videos, making art, um, teaching classes by the practice of doing it and then reporting back to say this didn't work at all or this did work. And so hopefully version 3 will be even better than version 2 in this kind of giant crowdsourcing thing. Can, but, can we step, yeah. let's, let's step back for just a moment. Um, yes. I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now. Um, I, I want to learn more about what you do and what your goals are, and then decide whether or not I will make the time to help merge my ongoing efforts into what you're doing. I don't have time to sign up to something new right now, and I'm really excited about what you're doing, but I need to know more about it. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think what Thanks. I was just going to try to say with this Pyragogy Accelerator thing is this page 
kind of sums up a lot of what we've done. This is your progress to date. We've done all of this stuff. Um, and I could tell you more about that in detail. But the basic thought is, in the future, can we become, rather than just a book production project, can we become a place where different people from around the internet, such as me, or Kyle, or Ray, or yourself, or Charlotte, will take our own project and we'll say, here's my project. I don't want to start a new project, like you're saying. I'd like to get some help with my current project. And I wouldn't mind helping some other people with their projects as well. So it could be a very nice mutual support thing for ongoing projects that have something to do with peer learning and peer production. So that, in a nutshell, is kind of the plan for 2014 to work on that topic. So that what we have now, what we've come up with so far is this book. And it's like our opinion about how that should go. But, um, but we think the best way to do it is in practice. So hopefully that begins to answer your your question, but I will now stop talking and let you ask either other questions or just tell us about yourself as well and what you're doing, and maybe we can brainstorm how we would help you with that in some level if we can or, or not if we can't. Okay, so the idea of pyragogy is just people teaching other people, yeah, and documenting what it is they're learning in a place that is, that is searchable and findable in a new way. So you're, you're centralizing the, uh, the categorization and the listing, um, and in doing that, you are distributing the, uh, the teacher-student relationship, if that makes sense. Is that correct? OK, cool. Um, then that's beautiful. Um, I understand why it's difficult to pick a platform and have one work as far as uh, as uh, who was it earlier? Uh, Ray Raymond said earlier about how we or brought up that we've gone through a couple different iter iter a couple different platforms for asynchronous communication have been gone through. Um, the the ability to track our our how tos and the way that we ask questions and the way that we reappropriate. Um, or even readdress uh, how tos that have worked in one field into another field is something that is really difficult. Um, one of my one of my friends says very well that uh, the the third best answer to any problem is a wiki. Um, the first two always depend on the problem, uh, and so. Uh, yes, that's where my brain is at right now. Let me look through this while you. Uh, introduce this new person. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that that sounds like a very nice summary of the last two years from someone not in the project. So yeah, let, let's um, let Jan and John. Okay, let me know. I I have a comment. Let me know when I, when I can introduce it. If you can hold it, hold it, hold it for just a second. We'll get these new new guys in and we'll bring it in. That's fine. Yeah, well, just let me know when. Sure. So Jan, hi. Why don't you say hi? Up. You're muted. Why don't you say hi after you? There we go. There Hello, go. everybody. Great to see you. Great to be here. Glad to see Piragaji going on. Um, so, cool. I'm, in Vermont, I'm in Vermont, and uh, we're we're digging out of about a inch, half an inch of ice. Ice under ice. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, John. Uh, I think we've talked maybe once before. Is that correct? Uh, that could be. And um, I appreciate Charlotte suggesting that I drop in on this. Uh, I'm John Blossom. Uh, my official title is President of Shore Communications. Uh, to to uh, earn my way in the world, I've been uh, advising content technology companies on their marketing strategy. Uh, I wrote a book on social media called Content Nation uh, that was published a few years back, uh, which you can find in various places. And uh, my current interest in this that Charlotte uh, was so kind to draw me into is a project called NCOMO, which is uh, an effort to bring uh, peer-oriented communications to villages in Africa and everywhere around the world, actually. Um, and I won't go into the, all the bits of that, but specific to the conversation here, um, I was an early user, implementer, and advocate on Google Wave and uh, continue to be a 
a member of the Apache Wave community, uh, which is in the process of migrating over to GitHub as an independent project. Uh, so Wave technologies for collaboration live also. And I heard just now, you know, the, the solution to most problems is a wiki. And I imagine there's some of us who'd say the solution to most problems is a wave. But um, I think we're all trying to, to come up with good platforms that can help people to become productive and to assemble both knowledge and real-time interactions that help people to gain knowledge. So I'm not sure how long I'll be on this call today because uh, I have some things pending, but I'm glad to be here. Thank you very much. Um, Seth, thanks for spending some of your real time with us today. That's nice. I uh, appreciate it. Um, Ray had a comment he was holding until yeah. we had you guys in, so yeah. Okay. Well, so I was referring to what you know you said about the different platforms. So one thing I've been noticing nowadays is that, you know, when you have, I would say that when you have any, you know, large project, and I think, you know, given the way Pyragogy expands, it's probably getting that level, that, you know, you probably can't realistically expect that to get everybody to use a single platform as, you know, we'll all contribute this all to one website or even use one type of thing because that will, you know, depend on individual circumstances. So I'd say it's also important to think more how do you actually coordinate different things so recognize that, yes, people might be contributing to a project, but they won't necessarily go to your website. They'll use, you know, whatever they're most comfortable with. So how do we, you know, should think instead on the next level of combining those so that, for example, maybe I can extract data or link to other things, you know, where the data or mirror data rather than all expected to come in one place if we just pick the right platform for everyone. Charlotte is, is I think, il illustrating your uh, thing with the, with the diagram, this Kafka's wound website that's been popping around. Um, uh, where to go? Yes, there it is. So, you know, here's a nice book, but if you click the things, then it suddenly starts bringing in more information from elsewhere, although this one is bringing it in from its own website, but there you go. Pretty cool. Um, so maybe one day the Pyragogy handbook. I would say. Yeah? Or illustrating what I said would be more like if you had not just that, but, you know, ten different sites on Kafka which somehow acknowledge each other. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I, I already brought a quote from what you emailed to me into this um, open, open, uh, what is it, common abundance thing. So, okay, so but for the completely new people, for the completely new people, uh, Willow, have you absorbed any of uh, the stuff we've been fire hosing you with? <laughs> yes. Okay, yes. feeling good. Okay. Um, so the, the accelerator that you're looking at, is this a way to keep track of and support ongoing pyragogy, pyragogy uh, initiatives? Sure. So we tried, we've tried this in the past, right? We've tried this in the past. That web page has a list of all these different things we've tried. So I'm on the board of directors of the Free Knowledge Institute. We sort of tried, why don't we create a free technology guild so that if someone wants to build you know, routers for your project in Africa and make them cheap, they could join our guild. Or if someone wants to build a, a kit for, you know, doing theater, I don't know, you know, social media stuff and theater, like Jan might or whatever, they could join the thing and we would support them in this wonderful peer support thing as if we were in a hacker maker space but distributed around the world. And we're not in one hacker maker space. Maybe we're in many. Maybe someone wants to build a hacker maker space and they want some support from other people who have done that about how to do that in their local community. So yes, we'd like to be there, but as I've indicated, we've tried lots of different times to do things like this, like like this accelerator, and many of them fizzle. Um, and we're, I think the first step to trying to do it well is to try to look back and understand why do so many of these things fizzle, even if the model works in some cases. So. Uh, some Howard said, why don't we make a book about how to build open courses? We'll do it the same way we did with the Piragachi handbook. And no one joined the project at all. You know, same convener, same model, no traction whatsoever. So. Yeah. And sometimes it's not an issue of the project or the leader or whatever else not being what's needed or even what's wanted. It's just a matter of timing. Um, 
and there are all sorts of examples of that happening. And sometimes it just means that you keep at it until it does make sense. Um, and you also have established a, a track record of having been doing this for a long time, regardless of, of funding or whatever else. Um, but sometimes it just means it's not gonna it's not gonna be the thing that you do, and so one of one of the things that Geeks Without Bounds has run into, uh, in all honesty, is that what we do is really esoteric and weird. Um, we support people that are not going to make money, which means that we don't end up with angel investment. It means we don't end up with venture funding. It means we end up with people that happen to have extra money that support a good cause throwing in on it. Um, and that means that we spend a lot of time funding for it when we could be spending that building things. Um, yeah. And that has to do with our, our ethics, that has to do with our background, that has to do with all sorts of things. Um, and so I wonder if accelerator is the right term for what it is you're doing because are you really accelerating businesses or are you providing mentorship in a more distributed fashion? Are you providing a bunch of different sorts of mentorship in a structured way. Yeah, I, I think accelerator is probably the wrong term, but I didn't choose it, and Charlie did. He's not here, so we have to blame him remotely. Maybe he's listening right now someplace. Um, I, well, we I considered incubator as well, but but the, the, I think we also considered guild, incubator, accelerator. So probably probably accelerator is wrong accelerator usually means that the, the group is taking a financial interest themselves in the projects that they're incubating or as incubators like that but without taking a financial interest I, I think at this point we're not even completely sure are we taking a financial interest or are we not I think um, okay no blame needed fair enough um, <laughs> um, I think um, I wanted to get back one of the reasons I thought one of the reasons I think Kyle is is important to the project, contrary to what he was saying above, is that he studies um, composition and exposition. And I think one of the things is just getting the ideas clear, starting with a good title. But you know, we have all of these previous grant proposals or project proposals where we're starting up these informal things. And I think many times they fizzle simply because no one even gets what the heck we're talking about. And so we may be back in that mode now. And I, I think we need to kind of get it down to brass tacks. And I know Kyle has already helped us with the handbook in that regard. Um, and other people can weigh in on that, too. Um, okay. Ray, I think you were saying you had a comment. Yes. Well, I just want to say about the word accelerator. Maybe because I'm physics backgrounds in physics and not business, it sounds appropriate to me because, you know, acceleration means increasing the rate at which something happens. And in this case, sure, we might not make it happen faster by throwing, you know, financial capital, but I would say that we are certainly could be make it faster by adding social capital and knowledge capital. For example, you know, the fact that, you know, let's say now maybe someone would read the handbook, you know, go off and do their own peer body project and have to, you know, invent a lot of things on their own or make mistakes, whereas if they had this, you know, accelerator, they could speed up their process by finding out, okay, I can learn from what someone else did. Maybe I can reuse what they did. So in that, you know, sense, I would say the word accelerator is, is appropriate, although I can understand if people would, you know, mistake it for a financial thing, they might want to use a different term. Just, just to mention about the hub, and I think since someone else does have a comment, uh, I went down to London to visit them. They are like a, a membership group. They're sort of like the Better Business Bureau of the 2000s or something. So you join, you pay them some money, they give you a physical space you can sit. I think what we're talking about is the opposite of that. You don't pay any money. We don't give you a place you can sit, and it's very informal. We would probably have discussions like this, maybe a little bit more formal in terms of the discussions, but um, blah, blah, blah. sorry, I'm, I'm distracted by the chat. Go ahead, John. I think you said you had a comment. Yeah, sure. I was uh, just pasting in a link to Encomo. Uh, for those people who want to learn more per Charlotte's request. I'm also going to uh, put in a uh, link to a platform called Rizoma, uh, which is a, uh, a freemium platform based on wave technology for people who may be interested in it. Um, and, you know, I, listening to some of these struggles that people are describing, uh, it's familiar. 
and one of the reasons that I'm approaching this uh, project in Como the way I am is to recognize a, a few things. Number one, why do things fizzle? Often because people say the solution is a particular tool. And the solution is not a particular tool. The solution is the ability to have tools that can be used freely, but also be used in ways that people can make money. And uh, one of the approaches that I'm trying to uh, put forward in putting together in Como Project, hopefully using some Google Wave technology, pardon me, Apache Wave, um, mm -hmm. is to separate the data model from the app. And that sounds a little bit esoteric, so let me just kind of see if I can simplify that for a bit. You know, one of the reasons that platforms fizzle is that people's data get stuck in it. And the tools on those platforms are pretty good for something, but not always everything. And, you know, some people are going to feel comfortable with the tools and some people won't. Or they're comfortable with them up to a point, and then the data needs to migrate somebody somewhere else for more utility. Mm -hmm. And that's where things get stuck a lot. What I'm trying to do in Encomo is to create a data model first and foremost that can be used in a lot of different settings. Some of them are purely for community use, to be able to uh, transmit knowledge from one person or group of persons to another with or without the internet uh, using mobile technologies. Um, and on top of that will reside n number of applications that uh, could be useful using that data in different ways in different sorts of circumstances. And so using that as, as a general idea, I think one of the reasons that a lot of uh, freeware and peer uh, projects fail is because there's not that portability. You need to be able to say, well, you know, the, the data structure that we need uh, should be such that we can capture common data uh, conversations, uh, common multimedia, uh, common data threads, and so on, in a flexible way that can be used and reused by multiple tools. And in, so that people aren't stuck saying the solution is a wiki, or the solution is, you know, a, a, you know, Google, a, a, wave, you know, a wave interface, or what have you. The solution is people working together um, on on common information sources and, yeah. we can, and we need a data model that's flexible enough to allow a range of tools to, to surface, some on a free, free basis, some on a premium basis. So, so I, I, I agree with you and I think Willow is pointing out in the chat that so would a lot of people. A lot of people do agree with you and I think a lot of people are trying to do that or be that or be one of a, one of a group of, of, of you know, um, yeah. So what do, what do people need to know? The pyragogy angle here would be what do people need to know in order to build that, deploy that, get a proof of concept, get some people using it, support them through their first steps, and maybe move on to the next level of abstraction or something along these lines. Um, yep. So... Yeah, because in, in, in the larger scheme of things, um, we want to help people for free, not for the sake of free, but that the people can be successful. And there's a lot of good things about free. Uh, it, it breaks down barriers. It allows people to have the sense of intellectual property being not something that a corporation sucks up and uh, you know, is lost to our personal capital forever, but allows us to shape it in relationships flex flexibly with one another. That's all good. But you, know, you need the right sort of platform to be able to do that. And um, to have yeah. people have the confidence not only that free works, but the what's in it for me will work. Yeah, also. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think a bigger part of the platform is somehow the people as well as the tool. You get the right absolutely. people. Absolutely. They all come up with the tool to solve the problem in a way. And, and, and there's well, the opposite view. Go ahead, Ray. Well, I, said, I was saying that I completely agreed with what you say about, you know, separating the data from the application. I mean, that's very close to what I'm saying. And then, you know, another take at another level is also doing, you know, also standardizing interfaces so different applications can easily work together. I mean, like I said, you can take the whole data or even nicer, you know, be able to combine them sort of like, you know, one simple example would be something like a Unix pipeline. Mm-hmm. Good example. 
you know. Um, okay, so I guess my question is is as my mic on. So my question is, uh, what are we gonna what are we gonna do about it here? So there's a, a a nice number of people here who are either geeks without bounds or sufficiently distributed geeks around the world that we could form our own little smart cluster uh, to do something about it. But but what are what are we gonna actually do about it? And I, I think. Uh, Anyway, I, I, I think that the pure agogy accelerator is kind of, maybe it's more of those, this is the question. We don't know the answer yet. What are we going to do about it? Yeah. Well, so one thing I would say is, yeah, if we can, you know, certainly I would say if we can do something like at least partially standardize, you know, take partial progress, what we're saying about separating data out, that would help because I would ultimately see the accelerator as some such distributed thing, which isn't one platform, but you know, can potentially involve many. But a lot of those data standards already exist, so you're not even creating them, you're just encouraging well, people sure. to use them. But that's the point, you need to, I would say, that's right, so I would say the thing to do is that to identify the people who are involved, and so far here we've been doing a good job of bringing people in, and then sometime let's have a you know, discussion where we figure out, okay, which data standards are best for us, and agree to, to implement them. But it's still not clear what your end point is. I really like that uh, Gigi pulled in on our chat of what are your goals for the upcoming year? And then figure out how to get there. Um, right now, it sounds like a lot of, well, we have this piece and this piece and this piece. What can we do with it? Instead of a, I mean, any, any conversation that you have about what you want to do over the upcoming year is going to be deeply informed by who you are and what skills you have as a group. Um, you're not. It, it's not the blue sky of, of somebody from the outside coming in and saying, "But we'll dream of these things and what we could do." Because all of you being involved in this, you're already going to know what you're capable of, but also what will push you. And you also already hold the vision of what this group is. And so, in deciding together where you want to go and what you want to do, you'll figure out how to get there together, just fine. Well, th that's encouraging. I like that. That's a positive view. I, th I think we had, so just for example, ex for as example, I think we started out by, by saying, Howard said, you know, can we make a book? And then, you know, a year later we had it. And now a year, another year later we have a better one. And so it's sort of like, well, maybe book is kind of done or that can sp we can leave that and let that kind of go a bit more slowly and pick some things that are a bit more difficult. But I, I do think that there's some some difficulty because everyone here is, coming from a very different background, uh, some technology, some not, some humanities, some not, some social activism, some not. Um, I don't think we're going to easily agree on one goal. And in the end, we may just be a group of people who get together and has chats once a week. And that, that could be our goal, to do that for a year, if we can maintain it and, and continue with decorum and stuff. Um, or maybe we'll say something a bit more we may say something a bit more dream-like in Blue Sky. What if, you know, what if not just in one year, but in five years we could achieve blah, and how can we take the first step towards that? I, I don't know. Um, um, I, I, think, I think that the underlying thing with this accelerator, though, is literally quite a few people here in different capacities, maybe all of us, would like to make some money. And I, I think we're really trying not just to provide some kind of service for other people to be successful, but we're trying to figure out how the heck can we all individually be successful with some of our own projects, if that clarifies at all. Well, and I would say also that there's, you know, it may not be one project. I could see, you know, several different groups break out. For example, there's a discussion we had a minute ago on technical issues. That might break out into one project. You know, it might be another more humanistic one. I would say that's fine. It's just a matter of us keeping in touch with each other so we can find, you know, where one project could help the other. Well, you know, you, you, you brought up the term accelerator earlier. And I'm not sure that's 100% accurate, but I, I understand where you're trying to bring it. Um, what you're saying is that you want to have common capital, if you will, that uh, brings people towards their goals using... Uh, this group and other people that can be pulled into the community as a think tank to help people succeed. Um, the key missing component is money. Um, so one of the questions that maybe you could help people answer is how do we get people tied into project money 
and how do we as a community help one another uh, to have the branding and visibility to get funding for worthwhile projects. And that may or may not be a separate funding platform. It could be tying into some of the existing ones, such as, such as Kickstarter, but certainly not limited to them. Um, so that, you know, like in the commercial world, people say it's a Y Combinator project. And any number of things get funded by them, and people say, oh, Y Combinator. And, you know, they get all tickly with that concept. Well, you know, is there something that we can do for these sorts of very important projects where people say, ah, there's some sponsoring here by that community, um, that merits our attention for funding. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. I like what Willow was saying. I wish she could, she could say it again about what they're doing about money, um, because I, I, I think in another project in Planet Math, I think we've often spent time uh, chasing money. I spent some time trying to raise funds, you know, and I'm... I, not very successfully. Um, and then the best way to get funded for Planet Math was turning out to, for me to get funded to be in a PhD in England where I got paid, roughly speaking, to work on Planet Math and write a thesis about the process of doing that. Um, and in the end, that was one of the most significant investments in Planet Math to date was the investment in my studentship, you know, um, well, but which let's, is nice let's for be me. More general. It wasn't just you. They were also there were also other students like James Gardner and the Quark students in general. Yeah, but it, there were talk about, about a wave. different students for a lifetime. Right. No, it, but as a wave, I think it, it provided a, a, a kind of impetus or something that, you know, one person was funded and so I could do that thing like we were talking about the humanities online people or the humanity online people that I could bring their contributions together and kind of help be a, be a hub in that in that in that language. So, but well, what were you saying? I didn't quite catch it when you said it before that you don't chase money because it takes up time, or that you do get money and it's very easy for you? One more no, time. No, I was saying that um, getting money for something as strange as what Geeks Without Bounds does, in that we are, like, we support teams that aren't going to make much money. Maybe if they do base of the pyramid stuff, which is just that there are so many people in the world that have so little money, but if you do something that's worth a tiny amount and you reach all of them, then you can still make a lot of money, um, is, is the idea behind that. And that you know, it's better than philanthropy because philanthropy isn't sustainable. And yet, I still, as uh, someone with the political leanings that I have, I'm very wary of introducing capitalism into places that haven't had it before, um, given where it's gotten us as a society in general. So, like, that's my my political rant. The other part is Geese Without Bounds uh, subsists on the kindness of people that believe in what it is we do. Um, there are organizations out there, and we have ended up supporting them because they've ended up in the White House or they've ended up with UN contracts or whatever else because of how they've supported us. But at the end of the day, we focus on what needs we are here to fulfill. And we don't make a lot of money, but we can still pay our rent. And so one of the questions that I was about to try to ask in chat is, are you a group of people who are banded together to see the purpose of pyragogy fulfilled or are you a group of people who happen to have a shared interest, who are all seeking to support yourselves in one way or another, and you happen to be in the same chat room at the same time? Because those are two very different ways of getting to where you're going. Well, so for myself, I'm very idealistic. I also have my, I have a completely, almost completely separate income. You know, I, I came up with this pedagogy thing. Uh, as part of my thesis, and Howard took it off and, and said, let's make pyragogy, and Howard has the kind of draw that brings in people. But I think everyone here is probably a complete maniac in terms of devout believers in this kind of thing, even without the term to rally around. You know, I, I think, you know, Kyle has been working for four or five years on this, you know, well, maybe not continuously on his thesis, but building up to an undergraduate thesis about this stuff. You know, Ray had been working on things similar to this stuff a decade and a half ago in physics and mathematics and so on. So, you know, I don't know everyone else here, but I, I know that we're all kind of doing that, living and breathing this stuff in our own lives. So it, it, it's probably, my answer to your question would probably be it's both, that we are people with common interests, but right. we're people who are really kind of emotionally or spiritually invested in this kind of thing. 
So it, it's a it's a pretty uh, intense common interest. Well, plus it's also an extremely quite a heterogeneous group, so you have to be careful about generalizations. That you mm -hmm. know, every time there's you see an average, there's probably going to be a huge deviation around it. Okay, so it, it sounds to me something like the, the position that I have ended up in, which is I contract my facilitation and drawing skills in order to make ends meet. Like that's, that's what I do. And then I do Geeks Without Bounds work in general pro bono because that's just how that ends up and that's how I take care of myself. And the values upon which Geeks Without Bounds is built and that we bring with us places are things that I stand for anyway, regardless. And it's really nice to have a space where I can also advocate for that and send people to uh, when that's the conversation we're having. But it's not something that I have expected to... Think. Now we have two other employees that I want to be sure are paid, which means that most of the work that I do does not support me, it supports them. And that's, that's great. But that, again, has to do with the ideals that I hold in general. Does that make sense? And so I, I, well, by the, way, the question is, is it important to write grants for pedagogy and then be upset when you don't get them? Or is it or uh, fizzled out or be disheartened when they don't happen or feel like you're going in the wrong direction or feel the, the stress that we... Uh, feel when our housing is not taken care of and we're not sure where we're eating next? Um, or is it, what can you do for free with the people that you have now as a labor of love? And then what happens when a grant does come through? What happens when three new people sign up to your cause all of a sudden? And, and scale in that way rather than hanging, hanging everything on these, on these grants or a way to, to do something together. Uh, totally, totally agree with you. Can I can I make a quick thing riffing on on that? Which is, I did a quick calculation, uh, and this is new for some of you guys, probably. I figured, what would happen if we got four volunteers who wanted to learn how to program? They were they were saying, we don't know much about programming. We want to learn some PHP. Those four people over the course of a year. Okay, we're talking slowly. Could according to my back of the envelope calculation, would bring in the same amount of value as one, one professional programmer working for a month. So way, way much more distributed, but you know, the pro would cost like 15,000 bucks to bring in for a month. This, this would be completely free, so that, that's the trade-off. Money allows you to pay professionals to do stuff. If you get volunteers, you could get the same amount of value as long as they're committed to do something with their time, and if they're if they're learning, and someone can mentor them, that that's good. So I, I personally think that this con this conversion factor of four volunteers for a year is equal to one pro for a month uh, is something we should all be keeping in mind. You know, it's 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 feasible, but I can only say based on the experience of the Apache Wave project, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you output. Um, if you think of what happened when Google Wave became Apache Wave, you had a uh, a problematic um, set of uh, programming that came out of Google that was uh, then lent as open source code to Apache Wave. And there it sat for several years barely budging forward because people didn't have that much time to work on it. You know, my, I, I think that my concern uh, from my own perspective, having seen some failures as well as successes, is that um, Free, uh, free work does not necessarily result in the best free product. It sometimes does, it sometimes doesn't. Sometimes you're lucky and you get something like Linux. And Linux, something like Linux succeeds because there's a media commercial application that comes out of the free effort. So, you know, um, in terms of the approach I'm trying to take with Encomo, I have a project defined that can be commercially viable and successful. However, what I want to come out of that as one of its byproducts is free and open source software and a free data model. 
that uh, people can deploy in any number of uh, circumstances and applications and what have you, and that can intercommunicate with other applications based on the same data model and communications model. Essentially, you know, if you think of what, for example, happened with email, you know, every day that we're emailing, we're using uh, free and open source software. And it just happens to be stuck on pretty much every uh, computer and server in the world. Um, that's the sort of thing that we need to get out there in the collaborative space. And you have things like Diaspora that kind of sort of did it based on the Facebook paradigm. But Facebook is just one, one way of communication. So yet again, they got locked in to one particular sort of app. So the approach I'm taking and uh, exploring for funding is looking for uh, sources of financing uh, that can, uh, some of it, which might be nonprofit, but some of it may be profit oriented. But one of the requirements for the project that I have is that there be open source outputs because uh, collaboration such as what you're talking about here today cannot succeed without that sort of software. Okay. I'm going to do an annoying moderator thing and say we've got a, we've, we've now, many of us have been here for an hour. We should probably, um, consider wrapping up and as part of wrapping up maybe we should elicit some comments from those people who've been relatively quiet because they've probably been thinking about everything we've been blabbing about okay. um, and, and so if anyone who has not had a ton to say wanted to say bam here it is um, please please say no no pressure though but spotlights on you if you want I guess I'll say something real quick um, <clears throat> Uh, Joe, I, I've been thinking about what you're saying about uh, how you started with the book and now you have the book and now what's next? Um, um, and a book's great, especially uh, a, a book that's digitized. Um, and I think a next step would be more videos and, and, and introducing multiple uh engaging multiple literacies in this process as well, not just the textual literacy um, into the project. Uh, I, I'm personally right now trying to develop those technical skills and video production and like those type of like animated videos, um, but I do not have it as of right now. But I, that's something that I've noticed, you know, YouTube is the second largest search engine um, search engine right now so pretty much like short one minute videos one and a half minute videos that are explaining the concepts of pyragogy could be resourceful totally agree we have we have some of those but I think if we put a few more we might be able to stitch those two and three and one minute videos together to make something you could actually actually watch from beginning to end for 30 minutes or 40 minutes, which would kind of sum up the whole thing, which would be really fun, mm -hmm. probably really nice. Even Howard has been talking about getting some more video in, so I agree. I think he would agree with you as well. Um, anyone else ringing any bells there? Charlotte, how are you doing? You're muted again, though. Oh. I am um, coming out from behind my screen. Um, yeah, videos. I was just putting in the chat that I, I, I've been involved in our local community media station since 2004 and <clears throat> um, learned a lot there. But I'm learning a lot about live um, video hangouts on air um, and private hangouts. So I'm wondering if, I know I see a lot of people on Google Plus um, monetizing a segment of their um, of their presence there. So uh, the Hangout guy, Ronnie Bincer, is a he has a private community that he charges $37 a month for. And I actually <clears throat> found it valuable to join that and have learned and you know now I have access to a, a direct conduit to him and others who have his level of expertise on live video. So. Uh, you know, that that's a small thing, but, you know, we could see what works. And I also wouldn't want to do it in a very annoying way, like hit 
people over the head with it because I just don't like that. But. I, I think yeah, I think also getting back to for for me anyway that the the North Star or whatever has not just been to make the book. I think the book is a tool, but my thought is that this book could be a very useful tool for kind of transforming education. So this is kind of like the screwdriver that you can get in there and twist to change things because. Although it doesn't say this in the intro now, it will as soon as probably later today. You guys just watch. I will change the intro. Um, basically, uh, basically, it's going to say this isn't just the book. The exercise of, of in this book, it's a textbook, but the exercise in the book is working on the book or working on some of these supportive things around it and reporting back, like people have been talking about. So it's an informal version of what John was talking about with the communication protocol. It says, you know, you don't need to be a programmer to get involved in this. If you are, great. Um, but you know, if you have something to say, if you read the book at all, you should have something to say. You should at least find a typo, but more likely find a use case or something that resonates with you or something that you disagree with, and then report back about that. And like, if people did that massively, and there was not just seven people in this conversation, but you know, a hundred other conversations going on around sort of changing education to work in a more humanitarian, more useful, more effective way, um, I think then we'd be successful. So I, I don't think the goal is just like, wow, let's build a book. That's like saying now we have a screwdriver. What can we, you know, what can we twist? That's the question to me. Yeah, I, I would sum that up as requirements. And in other words, if you're not a if you're not a, a technologist, but you know the problem that needs to be solved, define it well. So people can understand how their pro their uh, problems and potential solutions overlap. Okay. Oh, also I had a comment on what John and Willow had said earlier, but I'm not sure. So let me know when a good time for that is. I don't want to interrupt anyone. Okay, else. we're going to wrap up here uh, the broadcast pretty soon, and um, we can hang out afterwards if people want to keep talking. But I think so that we kind of give people a sense that this is a finite. So why don't we why don't we let Ray make his comment, get it on the record, and then we'll close it out. Good. Okay. Okay, if that's fine with you. So you know, just to re just summarize, since it's been a few minutes and other things have been said, you know, Willow was mentioning you know two uh, approaches. If I basically towards an organization, one was you know where I said you you know apply for grants and worry if you can get them. The other is the labor of love. And then John had you know added something to that based on his experience with Wave. So here were my thoughts, partially informed by the last 10 years of Planet Math. I would say that of the two approaches, the second one where you, you know, have a core of people doing the labor love is probably the more stable one. For example, in the case of Planet Math, we've had such a core of three or four people, and that's what's kept it going even through the times when we haven't had funding. So I would say, you know, the best thing would probably be to have such a core, but then, of course, while you're at it, you know, devote some of the time towards trying to get funding, but in a way that you don't, you know, overdo it or get burnt out if it doesn't come in. You know, and if it best reaction when it doesn't is this is then the step back say, okay, if I didn't get this grant, why? Was it because, you know, this wasn't on the topic they had or I was applying to the wrong place and and, you know, persist and hope that eventually you will get something. Cool. To totally agree. Yeah, um, I, I made my last remark in the chat, so that's a secret for anyone who comes and uh, digs in the chat later. But I think we're going to end the recording uh, as promised, almost almost within an hour, so it's kind of semi-manageable. Um, Charlotte, we got to work on getting some more commercial breaks in here. That would that would definitely pay the bills. Um, right. Nike. Um, okay, anyway, thanks everybody. Um, the recording will end, but the conversation continues online and beyond. Beyond online.